Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Arium, and in this tutorial today, I just wanted to show you guys how you can put together your own trip sheet in Quixel Mixer. So by the end of the video, you guys should be able to create something pretty similar to this. Uh, we Here you see we have different surfaces tiling horizontally across our texture here, uh, and then we have different masks for separate heights like 1024, 512, 256, and so on, uh, that all Kind of fit in together nicely into our texture space here so let's go ahead and dive in i will go ahead and open a blank project that i already started uh, nothing special to it just your, ba your basic default pixel mixer project um, and what we will do to start off with is we'll add a solid layer and i'll change the color here to maybe like some type of red right color doesn't matter as long as it's visible um, so we have our solid layer and then for the opacity it's going to be opacity masked and we'll go ahead and add our mask stack up top so for the masking uh, it's a pretty straightforward process uh, we can start by adding a checker pattern component here and we just have to tweak these settings a little bit basically to get the results that we're looking for so we'll get, go ahead and on the repeat X we'll set that to 1 and on the repeat Y, this value is based on how tall you want your trim to be. Uh, so we have a 2K texture right now. And if it's repeating twice, what that means is you're gonna have a trim that is about 10, that is exactly 1,024 pixels high. And then if we double this value to four, uh, then it's gonna be, each section is basically going to be 512 pixels tall. Uh, and then if you double that again, then you get 256 and basically you just keep doubling this number uh, until you hit that size that you want. So I'm going to start with four. We'll have, uh, we'll have a couple of 512 sections in here. Uh, and I like to work from the bottom up. So the bottom being my, my taller stuff. And then as I, as the trim kind of moves upwards, uh, then we move into our shorter stuff. So that is what we'll start with. So we'll go ahead. I'm just going to click invert here on this checkbox. And now we need to get rid of this, this top section that's been generated from the mask, right? So to do that, we'll go ahead and add another pattern here. So I'm gonna set this to checker again, and we'll set this to subtract. Set the repeat X to, uh, to one, and then the repeat Y is actually gonna be two. And already, it's, it's kind of already doing its job. So what's happening here is if I activate the active mask, we generated this mask and it's subtracting over what we had originally. So this white area covers exactly half of the square and that's pretty much exactly what we needed just to get rid of that. So now we have our section of our texture isolated uh, and I'll just go ahead and name this 512. I'll duplicate it and we can move on to the next section, which is pretty, pretty straightforward as well. A lot of this is just kind of inverting and adding patterns to get the to mask off the sections that we need. So I'm just going to hit invert and then we'll go ahead and change the color so you guys can see kind of the visual visualization of it. Uh, and now we have that section of it. So we'll do uh, we'll do one more. So we'll duplicate this one more time. I won't change the color just yet. Uh, and what we'll do is we're going to just invert this again, but we're also going to invert the top. Uh, so what we can do here is invert this top section and then just change the color here. Kind of, it looked weird for a second, but I realized I didn't change the color originally. But now we have this, this, uh, so we have our third section. So if we wanted to go down to size, so moving into smaller territory here, uh, all we have to do is adjust our mask stack a little bit. So underneath the initial pattern, we're gonna double this value from uh, on the repeat Y slider here. I'm gonna set this to eight instead of four. We're gonna keep this pattern here, this bottom pattern where it's cutting off the bottom half, uh, but we're also going to introduce a new one. So we're gonna make a new checker pattern here. I'm actually gonna move this up so repeat X down to one again, and then on the repeat Y, we're gonna keep this to four, and the blending mode is gonna be set to subtract. 
Let's see if we invert some of this. Well, first let's change the color so we can kind of see what we've got going on. This is the mask that it's that it's creating right now, right here. Um, I think we need we need it to be up a couple spaces. So to do that, let's just double check. A, a lot of this is just kind of playing with these nodes to get what we're looking for. And it looks like in this case, we just had to invert this third pattern that we created here. So the one that is repeating on the Y by four, just make sure that invert box is selected. Um, and when it subtracts out, it'll subtract out the right area. And then we can just change the color here again. Do a nice, a nice dark green. So now we have that we can do, so we can do like another size lower. We'll do, a 128 here and I think all we have to do for this one is just invert this there we go so it's pretty straightforward uh, it might seem a little bit confusing at first but it's really not too bad uh, it's really just a matter of like adding these checker patterns and subtracting them out I didn't actually I didn't uh, you know this so the repeat y will go to 16 now and now we now we have these two sections right so we need to get rid of um we have to get rid of the we have to invert this first i believe yeah right. yeah so we want this top one but we don't want this bottom one uh, and to get rid of that we're going to add another pa another checker pattern uh you'll notice that kind of the the workflow here is as you kind of decrease size or the, like as your height decreases, uh, you'll find yourself adding another pattern that's kind of one step below. So I'm gonna set this to eight uh, to subtract and that'll generally give you the results that you're looking for. So if I invert it, now we have our, our proper 128 here. And then again, we'll change the color. And if in our mask, we'll just invert this and now we have everything's kind of lined up nice and neat right everything's pixel perfect uh our masks are labeled like we need them to be just that way this is just easy so you know how big each one is and you don't have to remember it and what you can do from here is uh, i'm actually going to group these up we'll just call this masks and uh so now you can start bringing in like surfaces so if we bring in I mean, any surface works too, really. So we'll go ahead and just bring in like this, for example. Uh, I don't want it in that group. So here we have, I guess this wouldn't make a very good trim, but it'll work for, for example purposes. Uh, so I brought in a, a stone here and let's say I want to, there we go. Uh, I want to start massing some of, some of it off all I have to do is just open our mask template that we've kind of made here, hit copy mask stack, and then you can hide it again. And then here, if we paste the mask stack, uh, you can see it's only showing this texture uh, across the bottom. And maybe if I choose like a, a brick wall, it'll be a little bit better. And this is pretty much how, how it'll work for, uh, for all of these parts. So. If I paste it here, there you go. And you can see that we kind of have this, uh, all right, this, this stone wall texture that only blends in uh, kind of at the bottom. And then you can go in and you can adjust what you want here. And once it's good to go, then you can bring in another one. So uh, let's see, we'll look up a, a wood texture this time. And hopefully something will come up that I can use. Maybe nothing will. There we go. Um, and we'll pick maybe this one. Just drag and drop it up here. And we'll copy the next mask, mask stack and just paste it here. And we might have to, I know it kind of looks like they're sinking into the bottom here. Um, you can change that by adjusting this threshold so that it kind of pushes them uh, up or down. 
and then you kind of have this, right? So you have like this, this wooden floor surface that you might want to use for another area. Uh, and in this case, you probably want to rotate these tiles. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I think underneath the placement, we just have to do rotate 90 degrees. And then if we tile this, what, three times? Then you kind of get some of these, like the planks showing up, right? And this process is, uh, it's, it's pretty much just rinse and repeat for the rest of this, right? Uh, you don't have to do too much different. And you, you, you don't even have to set this up every time that you open uh, like a new, or you start a new mix. Uh, you can actually export this as a smart material, just this mask stack. So if I delete this now, And you start off with a you know you start off with a fresh a fresh uh, a fresh file or something like that. Uh, then you can just go into your local library. I already saved it. I already exported it. Um, but if I type in trim, this is my my trim sheet mask that I made, and you can see that it'll open the folder up that I made previously. And now everything is is set up as it was. Uh, so I can just copy and paste these mask sacks as I need them. And you can always edit them if you want to. So like if you wanted to make a, a, 20, a 1024 one, uh, then you could always do that here. And uh, you, you can pretty much edit everything uh, non-destructively thanks to the mask stack. Uh, and it makes working with trim sheets pretty flexible too, because then you can just switch out different surfaces with different uh, masks and you can kind of move stuff around uh, however you need them. So that's kind of how I have found out how to use trim sheets inside of Quixel. Um, I know there weren't a whole lot of videos for it previously, so I thought I would just kind of make one to help you guys out. So hopefully it helps. Uh, thanks for watching guys, I appreciate it, and have a good one.